Hi everyone, I'm excited to meet you with another project. Whenever I'm out to do some electronics work, there are some basic materials that I would require. It was a pain when I had to hunt for each whenever I needed one. So I built this soldering station. It has a place to keep some isopropyl alcohol and soldering flux liquid. On the other side, it has spools to keep the wire and the solder. In the middle, there are these helping hands with which I can hold a PCB. It also has a magnifying glass and here is an LED for that extra powered lighting. The middle section encases two 12 volt computer fans that can suck out toxic fumes when I solder. And on either side of the soldering station is a hot glue gun and a soldering stick. So let me show you how you can make one for yourself. I normally don't make plans or computer models while working with wood, but I wanted to try out and make this build as easy as possible for everyone. So I used 1 to 3 from Autodesk. Here I kept the width of every single side to be 8mm and mocked up this model. It is designed in such a way that all the sides are 80 by 80mm while the horizontal pieces are 160 by 80mm. The base is one long piece on which everything is mounted up. I have a link to this model in the description. You can download all the plans and 3D model pieces from there. First I begin by cutting the 8mm MDF into required strips. I cut them a little heavy of 80mm so that I can later clean at the table saw. I used waterproof MDF because they are more strong than normal ones. Here I clean the strips to exact 80mm. According to the 3D model I made, I would need 6 80 by 80 pieces and 4 160 by 80 mm pieces and finally one long piece for the bottom. I cut them using my crosscut sled. Here are the cut pieces. I dry fit all the pieces together just using screws. I pre-drill to avoid splitting of the MDF. The way to put all pieces together is to start from one end and keep arranging pieces as we go along. I use some spaces while connecting the horizontal board so it's level on both the sides. Sometimes I had to dismantle the already fixed MDF so that I can attach the next piece. I had to do that mainly when I attach these horizontal pieces. With that, one of the sides is done. Now for the fan housing. I first attach the lid and then check the squareness of the sides. So fixing the soldering station was mostly measure, pre-drill, then screw the piece in. Just followed the same procedure all along. Sometimes I used a level also to check if the piece was horizontal. And here I am making the space for soldering iron. Later once all is assembled I will take them apart and attach it permanently with glue. This I did not shoot. For the back door of the fan I have this another piece of 160 by 80 mm MDF. But this need to have a hole in the center to let out the air. So I mark the edges first. Then created some corner holes using Forstner bit. Now using a jigsaw I connected these holes to create a bigger hole. As every jigsaw cut even this was not smooth. But MDF is a soft material so using a file to even out the cut was easy. Then I set the back piece in place and pre drill some holes to attach it with the screws. Here is the assembled soldering station. What it misses is the electronics and helping hands. For the helping hands, I will be using this air or lubrication goosenecks used in the milling industry. These are relatively easy to purchase and very sturdy. I first test fitted it to see if it will work. The way to attach them is to drill 12 mm hole with Forstner bit and then screw these into the holes. Because MDF is a soft material, these will etch the screw as I tighten them. Then we can epoxy some crocodile clips into the ends of the helping hands. I took these from old helping hand kit which I found to be very annoying. 
It never did what it was supposed to. One of the reasons why I decided to build one of my own. For the LED light, I use this 12 volt 10 watt LED. These LEDs require a heat sink, so I use these heat sinks that I salvaged from an old motherboard. I printed some enclosure and tried fitting into it, but later moved on a bigger heat sink and attached a fan on the top for some extra cooling. The fan and the heat sink are connected using this 3D printed part. You can download it from the description. To secure the fans, they are just press fitted using the top piece of the MDF. They don't move anywhere around. I attach two switch on the top with which I can control the fan and the LED light. On the side here, there is a power jack in which I will connect my 12 volt 1 ampere DC power supply. The connections are made from the DC jack to the switch and from the switch to the fan and the LED light. The hot glue gun and the soldering iron will fit at the ends of the soldering station. These can be held in place using some screws. For the hot glue gun, I didn't want it to touch the base of the MDF when I rested it. I drove in some screws to set that in place so that no matter how I throw the hot glue gun, it never touches the bottom. For the soldering iron, I used this conical spring from the old soldering station. I just clamped it tight between the sides using the screws. As I tighten more, the more secure it becomes. At the base, I shoved in some metal scrubber. This will not let the hot tip touch the base. At the same time, it will help clean the tip. A 12 volt 1 amp power supply is too much for the LED. It will burn it. An easier solution will be to use a step down converter. But I found a much easier solution. These exhaust fans consume about 200 milliamps. So if I run the fans and the light together, then one amp of power from the power supply will get split between the fan and the LED. So I added a diode here. What this does is when I turn on the LED switch, it lets the power travel in one direction from the LED switch to the fan switch and hence both the fan and the LED will turn on. But if I switch on just the fan switch, then the current does not pass in the opposite direction. So just the fan stays on. Later, I will line this place with some carbon filter. It is very difficult to find them in India. So if anyone of you know from where I can buy it, please put them in the comment. The reason I configured the switches like this is because if I'm working outside or during daylight, then I don't need the LED but I still will need to run the fans to extract the solder fumes. This setup helps me achieve this. For the wire spools, I made this 3D printed spools. I measured the space between these two places and calculated how many spools I can fit in. Here you can see how I made them. Then I secured them to the sides with a threaded rod and a bolt on each side. If you don't have a 3D printer, then you can simply use empty spools. Then by increasing the height of the sides, you can secure them through a threaded rod. With that, I will call this project complete. Sure, in the future, I will be making some more improvements to this project. I'll be adding drawers here and some kind of a braces to avoid the bottle from tipping over. I'll be 3D printing all these parts just to make it look nice. Of course, this project can be made without the 3D printer, but having one just gives space for all these creative ideas. This video is part of a series in which I'll be setting up my electronics desk. So look forward in the next few videos where I'll be making a bench power supply, a cabinet to store the electronic supplies and an extension cord. Please do subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on all those videos. So what do you think? Will the soldering station be an interesting addition to your project? Please let me know in the comments. Also do share your ideas on what are the required essential parts for an electronics beginner. I would love to know all those things. Before I go, here are some of the projects that I think you will like. Until next time, happy learning.